So right now we still look to the energy sector. Exxon and Chevron were two of our biggest gainers in 2022. And yet they're not going to produce the same gains next year that they did this last year, but they're still going to have monstrous free cash flow generation and, and further entrench their market share. Some great acquisitions that were done in 2020, I think a Chevron's purchase of Nobel. But I think that the midstream sector is where there's still a ton of value in energy. The pipelines, those LNG export uh, uh, terminals that are being built. Um, there's a lot of cash flow spitting off. There's a lot of uh, better financial metrics, less leverage, less debt. And we think that the midstream energy sector, we use an ETF that is called UMI. Uh, the ticker is UMI. It's actively managed. It has about 19 companies in it and it just kicks off a ton of dividend and we think has a lot of price appreciation ahead as well. The people that are screaming about the big profits that some of the oil companies made this year have been notably silent about record levels of losses they experienced in 2020. And so you can't get the bad without the good or the good without the bad. You, there's massive profits made this year. There are massive losses in 2020. And um, unfortunately, uh, for those who are worried about profits being too high because they don't like fossil fuels, um, it doesn't work that way. We don't have a limit on the profitability of big tech companies either. So one's political orientation should not really affect, uh, or the political correctness of a sector for that matter, should not really affect our laws about profit and loss. We have a market economy. Um, I do believe that these companies are spending more money than any company on earth for future productivity, for future capital expenditures. Chevron will spend $17 billion next year. Exxon will spend $25 billion. So there's an awful lot of jobs and an awful lot of effort for more renewables, for cleaner energy, and, and a whole lot of other factors. But the idea of them having a lot of free cash flow and sharing those dividends with investors, I think is part of the risk reward relationship investors sign up for.